Kevin Williams and Bob Batters from Shore Sports Network and the lacrosse season has really hit the home stretch. We've got a few teams left from the Shore Conference and Bob, big few days coming up, championship time. Absolutely. And uh, as you said, just a few teams left and really it's the three teams we kind of figured would be there at the end. Manisquan, Christian Brothers Academy, and Rumson Ferry. And those are the three teams left standing uh, after the semifinals this week. Um, we had two, an all-shore semifinal with uh, you know Rumson and Wall, and Rumson coming out on the top of that one. So Rumson will be playing for the South Jersey Group Two title, Manasquan and South Jersey Group One going for that championship. CBA, the non-public, uh, that's really a group, so they're kind of around behind. So they have a huge uh, semifinal game coming up on Friday against Seton Hall Prep. So yeah, it's this is championship season, as I like to say. This is when uh, legacies are built. And these are the teams that if I would have told you a month ago, you would have said they would be the ones last standing, right? Absolutely. And these are the teams, you could have even talked about this in mid-March, said, hey, who's going to be playing there on Championship Weekend? And, you know, you could have said all three or at least two of these three teams, and uh, you, know, you, you probably would have felt really co uh, confident saying that. And, and as it is, here they are. All right, so Manasquan and Rumson are playing on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about Manasquan and, and who they're playing and what, you know, what's on the line. Yeah, and the Warriors, uh, the number one team in the Shore Sports Network top ten, uh, they'll be hosting Madison on Saturday at noon uh, at the good old Army camp over there uh, for the South Jersey Group 1 title. So Madison won, this is their third straight year in a sectional final, going for their second title uh, overall in program history. And certainly the Warriors over these last couple of years have really come on. I mean, Madison won's the oldest lacrosse program in the Shore, going back to the early 90s, started by Mike Dabb. He's now the head coach at St. John Vianney. So the Warriors have always been there. They've always been one of the Shore's best teams. And they hit a little bit of a lull, uh, you know, somewhere in there. But you know, obviously they've been back in a big way over the last four or five seasons. Madison, you know, dominant uh, in most of their games this season. They don't play the best schedule. Uh, you know, they're in B South and they just crush everybody. So you get to these games and obviously it tightens up a lot. You know, they had a huge first round win over New Egypt. You know, twenty one to two wasn't even close. The quarterfinal game, I happened to stop by just being in the area, and it was a it was a slugfest. I mean, a dogfight there. 12-10, they came out on top over Glen Ridge, uh, and then on on Wednesday night, uh, you know, a scrappy Burners team. They won 8-4. We're up 5-1 after the first quarter. Uh, Burners close to make it 5-4, but Madison and did what Madison does, um, and came away with the victory. So. You know, I imagine this championship game is going to be a test just like that. You know, they're not going to come in and, and roll over these teams. We're at the point in the season where nobody's doing that. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big test. You know, Madison, always a team that's in contention for a sectional title. Um, you know, Rumson's done battle with them over the years, too, when they were in the same group. Now Madison's down, uh, you know, in group one with Madison. So, I think we can expect a, uh, a game that's probably going to be in around that, you know, eight, nine goals uh, apiece for each team. And, Again, as it always does, and we'll say the same thing for, for Rumson CBA, it's the little things, the face-offs, those 50-50 ground balls, who makes the least amount of mistakes. Uh, Madison, when they're good at that, you know, they're excellent. We saw in the Shore Conference Tournament Final. And by the way, they have Canyon Birch, who only has 116 goals this season. Yeah, the games of him getting seven, eight, nine goals are over at this point, but uh, he can make an, an impact, you know, doing a lot of things. Just anytime the ball, uh, you know, he has it. There's a lot of good things going to happen. So the Warriors definitely the favorite there. They're the number one seed and the number five team in the state. Rumson is home on Saturday. Yes. Seed wise, they're the favorite, and maybe it looks to someone like me who doesn't follow like you. Wow, they got a break. The number one seed got beat. Yeah. The team they're playing is pretty good. Yeah. The seeds really in South Jersey Group Two, you can kind of throw out the window. And you know, Rumson is the number two seed, the defending champion in the bracket. Um, didn't have the greatest record coming in, but we've chronicled that many times and why. You know, don't pay attention to what Rumson's record is. Same thing can be said for Somerville. You know, Somerville's a, you know, a handful of games under 500, 8 and 13, I believe. But you look at the schedule that the Pioneers have played, and just like Rumson, you know, it has a ton of state top 20 teams on it. Uh, and they showed that they are ready for the postseason. They came out and they knocked off the number one seed, Ocean City, 8 6 in the quarterfinals. So kind of a weird bracket. On Rumson's side, you had the two and the three teams, Rumson and Wall, going at it. And on the other side, the other semifinal was the eight seed Somerville and the number 12 seed Hopewell Valley. You don't really see that every day, but you know, it kind of shows how this bracket was in terms of some of these teams just being a little more battle tested. So Rumson will go into that final looking for their section, uh, second sectional title in a row, trying to win their fourth overall. And um, this is now six straight sectional finals 
for Rumson, which obviously speaks to their consistency. There's a reason I refer to them as the flagship program of the shore. You know, certainly Manuswan has come on of late. CBA is always there near the top, but Rumson's really carried that torch. And this is such a different year for Rumson. You know, in my game story from, from the game last night uh, against Wallach, I'm talking about how it's anything but a typical season for Rumson. It's been up and down, uh, a lot of young players and just trying to get everyone seasoned and ready. But there's a reason they played that tough schedule and it's for now. And where are they exactly where they want it to be back playing for a sectional title? An interesting note, and I didn't really think of this until I was talking to uh, Rumson standout defenseman Stephen Ehler last night. Um, and Stephen Ehler is a football player, and they have about 10 of those guys. And they say, you know what? When we saw Somerville 1, you know, in the back of our mind, we're like, okay, get a shot at them, because that's Somerville ended Rumson's streak uh, four straight state titles in football. Obviously, two different sports, but you have some players on both sides. You know, that play ball. So another little interesting wrinkle in there. Rumson looking for a little bit of revenge, at least those kids that, that were on the gridiron in the fall. CBA hits the field a little earlier. They're on Friday, and they've got a uh, seed-wise very close, but they, are, they, they would clearly be the underdog in their matchup. They, they definitely will be. And, you know, let's not sell CBA short. This is a team that's been in the top five in the state uh, for most of the season. And, you know, they're going to go up to West Orange and face a really, really good team in Seton Hall Prep, and they even talked about that yesterday after the game, talking to their senior defenseman Ryan Tierney, and he even said, look, seed-wise, it's only a one seed difference. He's like, but we know what Seton Hall Prep is all about. You know, they've been, you know, up there all year. They're averaging 17 goals a game, which is just crazy, and they play a very good schedule. They've scored 20 or more goals about nine times, I believe, so their offense is very difficult to stop. Uh, you know, Notre Dame bound uh, Griffin Westland leading the way, so... That's going to be a huge challenge for CBA's defense. We've seen CBA at their best and what they can do this season, though. So I think if CBA you know, comes to that kind of performance, they're going to have to. I think they know that. You know, If the Colts come out and play their very best game of the year, they can certainly get that win. But it's not going to be one of those games you show up with you know, your B-plus game and win. Yeah. That's got to be an A-plus game to go up there against the Pirates. Uh, you know, CNL Prep has been you know, at one point number one this season, two, three in the state all year. It's a huge challenge for CBA. It's their first time in the semifinals since 2008, I believe. Um, and again, they're going to go up there and, and give it their best shot. You know, when you have a non-public A, it's not separated by North or South. It's just all those big parochial schools in there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you get to the semifinals, you're going to be facing probably a top five team in the state. And that's exactly what they have. So this is where CBA seniors are going to look to come through and lead. And again, they're going to have to play. I don't want to say a perfect game. They're going to have to really do everything right. Little shout out to the Rumson girls program. I've already secured a championship and carrying the banner for Shore Conference girls programs. They they really have, and it's remarkable when you think about what the Rumson Fairhaven girls across program has done under their head coach Amy O'Keefe. Um, it's their second straight sectional title. Uh, they've now won 105 consecutive games against Shore Conference teams. I mean that is unbelievable. Uh, you talk about streaks in the Shore Conference. We've got some great ones across all sports. That's definitely up there. Uh, you know, Rumson played Manusquan in the Shore Conference Tournament Final, uh, and everyone expected a blowout there. It wasn't. It was 11-7. Rumson came away with the win uh, for the sixth straight Shore Conference Tournament title. Uh, this time they looked no doubt. 16-4 yeah. the final, 14-1 at the half. So that's not just winning the title. That's sending a message that uh, we are still the team to beat in the shore, and that's not going to change for a while. So now Rumson going to go on the road. Uh, they should have had to field in the Group 2 semifinals. They'll play that on Tuesday out at Morristown High School. And that's got a nice little subplot, too. You know, those two teams met in the Group 2 semis last year. Had to field, knocked off Rumson uh, to end their season. So I'm sure the Bulldogs looking to get back and get some revenge and try to get over and, and win a Group 2 state title. So Bob will take you through lacrosse for these uh, next few days, maybe next week or so, as uh, Shore Conference teams, four of them still left, uh, playing for championship games uh, coming up. We're going to segue real quick because pretty exciting news for us this week at Shore Sports Network. We uh, announced formally on our, on our website here that uh, uh, the what people best know, I guess, is the all Shore Gridiron Classic, or some will say the Monmouth Ocean game, yeah. the 41st annual, uh, which will be played July 12th at Brick Memorial, will be called the Shore Sports Network All Shore Gridiron Classic, presented by our friends at Envision Eye Care. And uh, hard to believe, I know you're still in lacrosse mode, <laughs> but real soon we'll be getting ready for a football game. We will, it's happening. You know, that media day where we all get together coming up in early June. 
And before you know it, it's going to be Fourth of July weekend, and then we're really in in preparation mode for that game. But it's a great game. It's the longest running high school football all star game in the state. Um, it's got a great crowd every year, uh, and this year should be no different. You know, obviously, you know you always hope the weather cooperates. It usually does, so it shouldn't be a problem over at Brick Memorial. And yeah, you know it's it's exciting time because everyone loves football, and you kind of get that. Uh, you know, they call the MLB also in the Midsummer Classic. Yeah. That's our Midsummer Classic uh, in the shore with the uh, Gridiron All Shore game. The big change this year, in addition to our, see, our, our title sponsorship or, or name sponsorship of it, is the game has gone back from the late June to mid July date, which it had been for many, many years. And one of the big reasons for that is there are a handful of players who get selected to play to both in the North-South All-Star All-State game mm -hmm. and the All-Shore game. And the problem is those games have been within the same few days, so players couldn't do both. Now for those that are good enough to do so, they can. And it's a great choice to make. Obviously, you want to give the student athletes the opportunity to participate in as many All-Star games as they want to. And also, you, know, you want the best players from the shore Absolutely. playing in this game. And it looks like we're certainly going to have that. You know, we got to take a look at the preliminary rosters. Those will be out um, on Shore Sports Network on Friday. And, you know, I'll just tell you, the Monmouth County team is loaded. We need to take a look uh, at the list of players uh, that are set to participate in that game. So, again, it should be fun. Looking forward to it. But still got a few days of lacrosse left before we turn the page. Absolutely. So whether it's lacrosse or football, follow us on ShoreSportsNetwork.com. For Bob Batters, I'm Kevin Williams. Thanks for watching. And keep it with us.